Louisa, are we recording? Mm -hmm. uh, which, we, which you heard us do through the Lord's Prayer. And, uh, we call it on the Heavenly Father's true Hebrew name. Ahaya Ashur Ahaya. That's the name he gave to our, 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 our fourth parent, Moses. When Moses uh, asked him when he was going to Egypt in uh, Exodus chapter 3, verse 13 to 15, he says, I am that I am. This is my name until my children. This is the war of my name forever. Okay? In English, it's I am that I am. In Hebrew, which is the original language, the heavenly language, it's a higher, a sure, a higher. Okay? Um, we say, Bahashem, the Shaya, or Bahashem Yasha. Okay? Yasha is the name of his son. It means Savior. That's his function. When he comes back to the earth, he will save his people. So, Christ's name is not Jesus, but it's Yasha. Yeshaya is my savior. Okay? Many people get it confused with Isaiah's name. I'm saying that because we are re recorded right now. So, it's not just to you, it's to them too. His name is Yasha. So, they cut that argument out. His name is, he's not Isaiah. He's the savior, Yasha. Okay? Um, the Hebrew credo is, that big old book. Big book. Big book. Big book. Big book. Okay, so let's focus, y'all. Let's focus. Um, today. Oh yeah. Um, because we uh, on this uh, recording this social media thing. I have to introduce, introduce ourselves. My name is Elder Mahar. This is our brother Tyler, and we are with the Waking of a High Zealand Church. So, we we'll always give all praise and honor and glory to the Most High Ahaya for allowing us to be together as a family and celebrate, honor His holy day, His high holy day, the Feast of Dedications. Okay? I want to read something to y'all real quick because a lot of people don't understand. Um, that the holy days are still in effect, right? Through the lesson, we're going to go through a, a couple of precepts where we're going to see that Christ celebrated the Feast of Dedications, right? So, if my big brother could do it, we must. But a lot has changed from being under the Moses law, I mean, being under the law of Moses and being under the law of Christ, okay? One thing that has changed, and this is to clear the record, as we know, many people say that um, the law is done away with. This would be an every week topic. Okay? What died with Christ on the cross, okay, was the curse of the law. The curse of the law was death. Right? That's where grace comes in. We no longer can let anyone stone us, destroy us, kill us for breaking the law. Most has given us time to learn about him, knowing that he would put us in captivity and scatter us in all the four corners of the earth. So he gave us grace. I live my life through grace. That's why you have to be very, I'm thankful, hope everyone else is thankful that most have been merciful and allow us to live to get to, to get to this point of knowledge, of self self knowledge. Know who we are, know who our God is, what it does, what it means, what we have to do to please him. That's through grace, right? Um, so also with dying on the cross were the sacrifices. We no longer have to sacrifice a clean animal to atone for our sins. But the law stands. As we learned last week in class, the law is the, you know, it's the law of life. It's the doctrine of life. So I'm going to read a precept. First Corinthians chapter five, verse seven. <clears throat> and actually, verse eight is talking about the feast of unleavened bread, right? And this is after Christ has died, was resurrected, and sits. He's now sitting on the right hand of his Father on his throne. So we can't let the Roman Catholic Church. Tell us, deceive us, not to follow our holy days. Because we're going to find out today 
how important our holy days really are. Also, it's not just us that are honoring and worshiping, celebrating this day. The heavenly realm is doing the same thing. Okay? So for those who don't understand, today would be a it would be a double Sabbath. Because truthfully, when the sun goes down, that's the beginning of the feast of dedications. Mm -hmm. Okay? By the time this class is over, with, the sun will be going, have web going down. So we'll do a lot of reading today. Right? Okay, I'm not talking in right now, I'm gonna be quiet and let the most <laughs> let, let the most high speak. Let the tire see what they're laughing at me. But I'm serious, but we're gonna go through like four chapters out of the book of Maccabees, right? Because it's so much information in there that I have to through the spirit let people hear it. And um, it's gonna really show us if you pay close attention on how we got to the state that we're in right now. Where we can go to a Walmart store and see a brother with a with a with a Santa Claus hat on. Checking the bail to most of Merry Christmas. That was not the custom of our people. Right? When we read these, these scriptures, notice the difference between our, our people that was faithful to the Most High. Right? They risked, they put their life on the line for the laws of their fathers. The Bible says in Deuteronomy that there only a few. There will only be a few men. I'm talking about to be a, a servant of the Most High, you must be valiant, a man of valor, a soldier. Just listen, listen to how our brothers was. Part this whole piece of dedication, y'all. It's been remembered because the Maccabees fought for their people. Let me let me start it over again. They fought for their God. They fought for their people, and they fought for their laws. This is during the Grecian Empire, and for those who understand, in the Book of Daniel's. It gives us four kingdoms, four beasts that will rule over God's people until Yasha comes, to our Savior comes, and establish the kingdom made without hands that will last forever. Well, the third beast is not in the 66, right? But in the book of Maccabees, it starts from chapter 1, verse 1. And that's our first precept. Okay, it's gonna, they're going to show you who was ruling, which was Alexander the Greek, right? The Bible talks about him, but it don't go in, in, into the history of it. Because if they don't take this, these books out of the Bible, I don't think our people will, a lot more our people would not be eating unclean animals today. A lot more people would understand that law could never die. It's our, it's our culture, it's our heritage. A lot more people will have real examples of how we're supposed to stand up for our God. So it's a reason, a lot of reason to out the so-called apocryphal out of the Bible. It's a powerful information in that book, in those 14 books. If we don't get to it. But I want to read uh 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. <laughs> read the, the latter part, start for, for, for even. Come. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. So Christ is our sacrifice. So we don't have to sacrifice animals anymore. So today, we come together because every holy day to the Most High is a holy convocation. It's a Sabbath. So we have to come and have a meeting. Right? But we must teach our people each year at his appointed times about his holy days, because we are to keep these things in remembrance, that this shows the wonderful, mighty works of our God. Mm -hmm. To build faith in our in our salvation. 
If we don't read these stories, again, how will we know? But the most high said, keep this in remembrance and teach your children. And we're going to read about a father that taught his children. Before he died, he gave a commandment. Right? One of the commandments is do not, this is for us. He doesn't talk to his, his, his children. He was talking to his family, which is Israel. He says, do not fear the words of an evil man. That goes for us. This is what we got to get out of this lesson. This is one of the, the things we got to really get out of this lesson. When the government comes at us, we cannot fear the words coming out of the evil men. Because, like it says, today he is lifted up, but tomorrow he returns to his dust. So, when you read these stories about our forefathers, apply it to yourself because it's coming. Learn from them how they die gloriously. Stand up for a higher so higher in Israel. Okay? So we come together as a family. We break bread spiritually on this day. And we break bread physically. And the Bible says that we are to do this in amusement and gladness. That's why I said yesterday on the text. I was here about three or four, about two or three songs today, Roland. She don't get that thing too. But seriously, we are to rejoice today, y'all. That's what this day is about. It's about remembering our heritage and rejoicing as a family. And I want to thank everybody for their efforts. Thank everybody for for their efforts for um for um for y'all the food that y'all have prepared. I can't wait to taste it. I gained about 25 pounds, that's what y'all. Because I gained another five this evening or this week. But uh, let's get it. Um, the first precept that we're going to go to, uh, Macca- first Maccabees chapter one. So we're going to read this whole thing, y'all. And, and, and tomorrow I think we'll read chapter seven because that's that's, that's, a, that's also a story there of, 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 uh, about the mother and her uh, seven sons. The most I said, to, huh? Uh, of the uh, Most High says to remember the sister and her sons. Mm-hmm. Need that work. Mm, I need different uh, cord. I can get it. Well, for a get another microphone. Okay. Hold on, Sarah. What, what, what microphone? Right. Can you give me the microphone? Thank you, bro. That's how you catch. Say, <laughs> <laughs> say, so, so you ain't lost it yet. I ain't lost it yet. <laughs> Let's get it. Maccabees, first Maccabees, chapter one, verse one. So again. We're going into the uh, Grecian Empire, right? Headed by Alexander the Greek. Now, truthfully, oh, and this to um, fill y'all in. This is how the most I want to see this. This is what's really going on. When we're reading about Alexander and these other men, know that it's not them. It's Satan that's in them, right? So Satan. Is in these men, right? Trying to destroy God's chosen people. He's using these men. We read about the men, but this is Satan's desire in his heart. Right? And we're going to break it down a little bit. Let's get it. The book of 1 Maccabees, chapter 1, and verse 1. And it happened after that, Alexander, son of Philip, the Macedonian, who came out of the land of Sittim Sh- 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 had smitten? Now, now this is Cyprus, right? So you know, this is a, this this is an Edomites. Okay, and this is their first time having world dominance. Okay, so who had came out of the land of Sittim had smitten Darius, king of the Persians and Medes. 
Anyone who, who watched the movie 300, this is their ass. True story. Okay? Well, let's go. That he reigned in his steed, the first over Greece. He's the first Edomite. That's what it's talking about. It's not, it ain't the first, he ain't the first to, uh, you see, it's the first over Greece. Greece had had um, kings and emperors and stuff. Right? He's the first Edomite. They've been trying hard to sit to generations to get on top and, and use their influence to attack and destroy God's people. Let's go. Verse 2. And made many wars and won many strongholds. Check it out. Remember what the most happened? Promise uh, Esau mm -hmm. through his father Isaac, right? By thy sword, right? Thou shalt live. So everything they do to, to, to gain wealth, power, they would do it through the art of war. They're very skillful people in war. Their father was a man of the field, a mighty hunter. Go ahead. Real quick, man, you were touching on Esau and Edom, and you said that you're talking about the Roman. What, 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 what I meant to thank you for that, sister. When I, when I said Esau, for those who understand um, the history of it, Esau um, are the Caucasians. Okay, they're a twin brother. Our father Isaac had twins. He had Esau, he had Jacob. Okay, so Esau, uh, then they changed to Edom. It means red. They're red, they're red people. Right? The most I call them red. Oh, he's, he's red like a hairy garment all over. Okay, so the Romans are the Edomites. These Jewish people over there are Edomites. Okay, let's get it. Invade many wars and won many strongholds and slew the kings of the earth and went through to the ends of the earth and took spoils of many nations, in so much that the earth was quiet before him, whereupon he was exalted and his heart was lifted up. See how his heart was lifted up. All right. And he gathered a mighty strong, a mighty strong host. And ruled over countries and nations and kings who became tributaries unto him. And after these things, he fell sick and perceived that he should die. Wherefore, he called his servants, such as were honorable and had been brought up with him from his youth, and parted his kingdom among them while he was yet alive. So Alexander reigned twelve. Now, now all this is prophesied in the book of Daniels. Right? It'd be like four wings on the leopard. The four, the uh, four wings all represent these four kings that will come from Alexander. Okay. Verse seven. You know, just think about it. This is all in a twelve-year period. Wow. This dude was a real. A who? <laughs> Satan put his power in him. And, and, you understand? He he. Yeah. He was a terror. Okay. So Alexander reigned twelve years and then died, and his servants bear rule every one in his place. And after his death, they all put crowns upon themselves. So did their sons after them many years, and evils and evils were multiplied in the earth. See there. Everywhere Edom goes. Evil follows. Every land Edom had conquered, they put up their Catholic or their their yeah, Catholic churches, right? Mm -hmm. In their military. Evil follows them. But it's deeper. What we gotta understand that today. I mentioned that Satan was behind this uh, Alexander, the Greek. So every land that they're conquering, right, they're setting up their God. Mm -hmm. Next land, they set up their God. That's where the churches came with it, their temples and reverence to their God. Keep that in mind, okay? It's very important to keep that in mind because that's the most 
important point. Let's go. Verse 10. And there came out of them a wicked root, Antiochus, a, a surname Epiphan Epiphanes, son of Antiochus the king, who had been an hostage at Rome, and he reigned in the hundred and thirty and seventh year of the kingdom of the Greeks. A wicked root. Okay, he went from one to the next. Let's get it. In those days went there out of Israel wicked men. Now please, let's pay close attention. Because this is going to explain to us how we got here. Why our people think that celebrating these so-called holidays are harmless. And I just mentioned, when they came in any land they came to, they brought their God, their religion. Mm -hmm. Right? But it says right here in, in verse 11, in those days when they're out of Israel, wicked men. So take heed this right here. Anybody in America, anybody that has riches in this world, our so-called celebrity in this world, are in this category. Satan does not give riches to righteous people. He, he attempts to, but it's the wicked man that compromise. Well, listen to the compromise and why the Most High called these men wicked. These are the elders of Israel, the leaders of Israel. Check it out. Let's get it. In those days went there out of Israel wicked men who persuaded many. See, they're, they persuaded many. Persuaded them how? Of what? Hmm? Persuade them to leave their their God, their laws behind and follow the heathen. Mm -hmm. Right? Their benefits financially right? To follow a, a heathen God. It's called fame. Mm -hmm. Riches. Listen. And persuaded, who persuaded many, saying, let us go and make a covenant with the heathen that are round about us. See that? Let us go make a contract, agreement, which is what? Breaking the law. Mm -hmm. It says we are not to make a covenant with the nations around us, right? Mm -hmm. Because it would be a, they would be a snare to us. But see, these, these leaders, right? Persuaded many people. Okay? That's why you see every. Matter of fact, what's, what's Christmas coming up next, right? Christmas, Christmas. Christmas coming up next. Yeah. All these churches will be celebrating Christmas. Mm -hmm. This is the beginning of it. Mm -hmm. Right? Let's go. For since we departed from them, we have had much sorrow. See there? Since we departed from them, we have had much sorrow. Well, the sorrow came from disobedience. Come. That's where it came from. But who's with them? We had it going on. We had this, we had that. Sound familiar like our people coming out of Egypt? Our people in Egypt in servitude, to hard bondage to most high causes, but they'd rather leave the wilderness and go back to hard bondage because they was able to eat when they want to eat. Drink when they want to drink. But there was a hard bondage. Listen. Verse 12. So this device pleased them well. See that? Hmm. Why are we struggling when we ain't got to? The heathen offer us everything. Right? Verse 13. Then certain of the people were so forward here forward herein that they went to the king who gave them license to do after the ordinances of the heathen. The most I said, do not follow the ordinances, follow his. They would assign their name and blood. 
And right now, you hear these, these entertainers say they signed their they name in blood. Uh -huh. Sign life over to the devil. Mm -hmm. That's what they're actually doing right now. They beg these people to give them a license to destroy their people. Verse 14, whereupon they built a place of exercise at Jerusalem according to the customs of the heathen. What is that, y'all? What's the place of exercise? Nope. Nope. The Olympics. Uh, this is what it, this, this, this is it right here. Right? 15. And made themselves uncircumcised and forsook the holy covenant and joined themselves to the heathen. See that? So now they have denounced their God and signed the contract with the heathen God. It's the same. See, to serve their God, you must forsake your God and adopt their customs, their holidays. Holidays are not, that's a, that's like a, a Christmas present wrapped up in the, up in the boat. It's not a holiday. It's paying homage to a fallen angel. Mm -hmm. To be wrapped in a bow in the boxes while how we feed it to our children. Mm -hmm. How we feed it to our friends and to our families. Uh -huh. We make it look pretty when it actually it's dealt in the box with a bow on it. Because you're worshiping. Whether I don't care how sweet you try to make it appear, nice it appear. The Bible's telling you that you're forsaking your God and you're praying harmless to the heathen gods. Okay? Let's go to verse, let's go to uh, second back. Letter, letter okay, go ahead. Sorry. And made themselves uncircumcised and forsook the holy covenant and joined themselves to the heathen and were sold to do mischief. Sold. They're sold on the sand now. Right? They sold themselves to do mischief. Foolishly against the most high. Right? Let's go, let's get into this Olympus thing. They go to Second Maccabees chapter four, starting verse seven. Well, we gonna get it now. Go with your left, because we we want back there. We gonna actually read chapter one to chapter four. Second Maccabees chapter four, verse seven through twenty. And page two forty eight. Those that have uh, the weeks. So we see this is why it's, it's why I was saying the entertainment uh, industry is the greatest tool of sorcery. Mm -hmm. Our people are not supposed to be in that in industry. Mm -hmm. Right? We have to sell our soul to go over here. For riches, with it, till our God out. And truthfully, they they needed us because we're way more superior than them. Like today, football, basketball, whatever sport it is, it started right here. This is the start of it. And you will see they had on helmets, also with a little tight little things on, which is perverted. <laughs> I had a moment once for in my life, not knowing how perverted it was, like our brothers and sisters out here doing it ignorantly. But that's why it's important for us to know our history. That's why it's important for us to remember this holy day, because it's breaking it all down for us, giving us the origin of it and what it's really all about. So when they say there's football guys and basketball guys, they're not lying. The Bible just really said that. We wasn't in, in the arena with heaven's own, with half naked, running around doing things before this day right here. Mm. You think man really created sports? Truthfully. Is man really that smart? No. no. Uh -uh. There's really such things called football guys, basketball guys, baseball guys, hockey guys. It's a guy of everything. Uh, hmm. yeah. Let's go. The book of 2nd Maccabees, chapter 4, and verse 7. 
But after the death of Seleucus, Seleucus, when Antiochus called Epiphanes, took the kingdom, Jason, the brother of Onias, labored under hand to be high priest, promising unto the king by intercession three hundred and three score talents of silver, and a and of and of another <coughs> revenue eighty talents. Y'all see that? He was laboring hard to be high priest over who? Israel. We say no high priest, but see, nothing has changed, right? Religion is a hustle. He wanted that money. Just like it is today. Just like it is today. Yeah. It says it. He labored, right? Under him to be high priest. Mm. See, it came with prestige, money, to be wicked in the eyes of the most high. Mm -hmm. Now, to men, that's good brother. Mm. Get it? Good brother. Right now, these pastors, people think they're good people. Most high, they wicked. Right? Man got his thousand dollars suit, two thousand dollars, three thousand dollars suit on, five hundred dollar tie, two hundred dollar shoes. Men worship. I mean, they respect that. I think guys with this person because he's prospering. This is where I'm saying. This is a powerful story, y'all. Listen. Let's go. Verse 9. Beside this, he promised to assign 150 more, if he might have license to set him up a, up a place for exercise and for the training up of youth in the fashions of the heathen. Stop it. Wow. Let's read that part again. Let's he promised to... He promised to assign 150 more if he might have license to set him up a place for exercise and for the training up of the youth in the fashions of the heathen. Train up the youth of Israel in the heathenistic fashion. Football camps, basketball camps, sounds familiar. Sounds like the building that we just left. Also, one with the, the the it's supposed to be an after school program, but sure. you know exactly they had you know young girls, impressionable young girls in there dancing, you know, teaching them vanity, yeah. you know, teaching them idolatry, idolatry. worship for themselves, mirrors every place, they're shaking their little booties like they're some prostitutes. Seriously, I had a uh, one of them funny girls teaching them, and, and, and had a sodomite <laughs> teaching them. <laughs> Like, real. <laughs> but uh, but uh, understand. Do y'all yes. understand what the Most High showing us? Right. The fuel behind that, the you know, the person who was pretty much over running the whole thing was just just the same as this person. It was money, it was prestige. Money. Yeah. You know, so it's the spirit behind it. You know. Let's go. Continue with verse nine. And to write them of Jerusalem by the name of Antiochians. See there? Now they went from an Israelite to be Antiochians, right? Mm -hmm. We went from being Israelites to African Americans. Uh -huh. Nothing new under the sun, y'all. Let's go. Which when the king had granted and he had gotten into his hand the rule, he forthwith brought his own nation to the Greekish fashion. See that? Now check it out. It's the same strategy to get the youth. Mm -hmm. To get the youth. You get the youth, you get their children and their children. And it's a pressure cycle. Uh -huh. Right? Get them something to strive for other than like we say all the time, being like the same. Mm -hmm. Right? Be like this Antiochian who was really an Israelite. We gave him a nice salary. Mm -hmm. 
right? Give him a little bling bling. <laughs> Serious. Let's go. Verse 11. And the royal privilege is granted of special favor to the Jews by the means of John. So, read it again. And the royal privileges granted of special favor to the Jews by the means of John, the father of Eupolemus, who went, who went ambassador to Rome for a mitty and aid, he took away and putting down the governments which were according to the law. See there? You got to put down the governments, the structure the Most High has given us. Mm. Right? For the royal so called privileges. Right? These high paid slaves are getting the royal privileges. Mm. But they don't even know their God because it's been through generation and generation and generation of lies, of strategy, strategic strategy. The same thing. All right? Of deception. Go ahead. He brought up new customs against the law. Check it out. <clears throat> we all know this so well. We're talking about these so called royal privileges, right? Mm -hmm. These. They use the athlete, the entertainer, right? To advertise the customs of the heathens, gods. Come. Right? What entertainer do you know? It's, it's, it's a couple of them, but the majority of them are promoting Christmas. And every other custom that comes with the Gentiles. Right? Thanksgiving, right? Our people think it's a good thing because they come in town and give away turkeys. But seriously, though, I mean, our people think it's a good thing. We came home and, and gave a thousand turkeys. This is where we come up right now. Everything. Yeah, um, I actually saw a commercial recently. A brother tagged me, and it was an Adidas commercial, and it had multiple common celebrities right now, basketball players, James Harden, rappers, and whatnot, and they were doing satanic rituals in the commercial. You know, so they're, Satan is being very blatant and out front in these end times, like it's wrapping up. They're showing you who they serve. I saw that one, too. I think they got a they have somebody laying on the table in a circle and all types of stuff. You know, but it's, it's, it's so wicked. Let's read this. Um, I was just going to say, <clears throat> it still amazes me, though, that uh, people that people don't see it. Right. And I think it's because, I mean, even as little kids, we have those seeds planted mm -hmm. in our heads. Mm -hmm. And so when we see it, it appears as something else. Like you say, oh, it's just art. And we don't look exactly. into it. Mm -hmm. Is right there, like right. It creeps me out when I see it, like. And yeah, people just think you know they defend it, like um. Yeah, I've seen a lot of like even just uh things that I see like the kids are wearing nowadays, and it's it's yeah, like yeah, like yeah, the the triangles, like all all of that, and it's like and they they just think that it's it, it's cute or it's art, and they don't know what they're promoting and what how they're selling and stuff. Mm -hmm. you see something? Um, yeah, yeah uh, one more thing I just want to kind of bring out real quick. I recently saw um, Terry Crews coming out speaking against some type of some kind of exec over like uh, a, a movie production thing. Well, it's crazy because he was outraged and mad because the guy was coming off super perverse and like homosexual toward him and stuff like that. But he don't understand oh. when you were in these movies half naked and acting like a woman. These these heathens, they were looking hey, hey, at hey, you. Hey, 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 y'all, can, can we uh, have some order though? Put our hands up before we speak because we are just blurred out right now. Let the brothers talk, please. Yeah, but like he he didn't under he he has to understand like these people are looking at you and they're looking at you in that manner when you're doing this. You know, the scripture says a man shall not wear what pertains to a woman. When you're on 
TV acting like this, promoting this, and people were thinking it's just funny or whatever, you're doing you're doing a lot more harm and creating an image for yourself that uh, it's not the best, you know, especially not in this society. You don't want to do that and promote that to your people, you know, or th the world for that matter, you know, and think nothing of it, but he takes the money, he has the fame, you know. So it's basically your brand, you know, you signed up for this. Mm -hmm. No, I was just going to say, what Tyler was saying, yeah, one of the first movies I remember seeing him in, that was like mm -hmm. the role he was playing. So when I read the article about um, him being sexually assaulted, I was like, that was the first thing that came to mind. Mm -hmm. Like, that's what you put out there. Exactly. Yeah, yeah um, and there's a girl that actually put him on school. She got the one on the red. She's wearing like a rose thing. For some reason, they got a black eye. On the back of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like uh, Rossum Glove, I believe. Okay. Real quick, the, the stuff with Terry Crews now and all that baby. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Terry Crews just got caught with his wife watching. So you got to make a big scene about exactly. it. But this is something you want to do. I'll tell you, I, I'll tell you what. Wait till we get to reading about our brothers. You you had to eat them or whoever come try to grab the genitals of them. Uh, mm. They get a spirit they hire. <laughs> you hear me? But that's the compromise for the money because I watched the interview. Mm -hmm. He said his wife was the one that prepared him for it. See, they think about more of the money than what being a man is. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna compromise the laws of my father. You're not gonna you're you're not gonna grab me there. I'm sorry, but I'll knock you out if you try to do grab me, grab me. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead. I don't know if it's just because we're on the information and again out here, you know, people are waking up and they're starting to search for the truth. And now all these accusations and allegations of what's going on in entertainment is coming out. But my dad, he just turned 86 this year. Mm -hmm. He's like, oh, that's really yeah, That's what they've been doing. They've been doing that for years. So the yeah. people who are coming out now, who talking about things that happened to them five, six years ago when they first got in the industry. They weren't saying anything then because it was a, a contract. They were like, right. they were like, right. this is what you can put it to. Yeah. 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 Yeah.